Hello and welcome to Stata in 15 minutes. The goal of this video is to get you up and running using Stata for your data analysis in under 15 minutes. And uh, we're going to cover how you get data into Stata and then how you uh, edit some variables that um, you have created when you get the data into Stata. And then we'll look at how you analyze your data using frequencies and some summary statistics. Plus, we're just going to look at some charts for categorical variables and a chart for um, uh, continuous variables. This will get much clearer when we get started. So I think we should get started right away. All right, so I have opened Stata. So the first thing we need to do right now is to make sure that we have data. Okay, so I've already set up some data in Microsoft Excel. This document has been supplied to you along with this video. And um, uh, we have interview ID, name, sex, age, and did you eat rice in the past seven days, which are our variables, and this is our data. Okay, let's go back to Stata right away. Now, in here, uh, to get that data into Stata, the first thing I need to do is to open uh, the data editor window, um, which has two modes, the edit mode and the browse mode. The edit mode allows you to edit data. The browse mode is just for looking at your data. In other words, it, when you open it in browse mode, it's read only. Uh, you cannot uh, add or edit anything. Okay, so to go to uh, data editor window in edit mode, you just have to type the command edit. One thing I need to mention is that I'm not going to be using the interface a lot. That is um, the graphical user interface. I'll be using commands because that's the way you get the best out of Stata. Okay, so type edit and press enter. That opens our data um, editor in edit mode. Great. So first, uh, the next thing we need to do is go over to Microsoft Excel which, where we have our data. I want you to take note of the variable sex and did you eat rice in the past seven days. You realize that um, um, the variable sex, we have been entering ones and twos. So one actually means male and two means female um, here. Did you eat rice in the past seven days? That was a yes and no. And one is a yes and zero is a no. So we will need to edit the variables so that we uh, reflect this so that when you're doing our analysis, it shows properly. Okay, so I'll select all the data, everything else, including the first row. Then I'll right click and copy this. Great, we hop over to Stata, especially in the data editor window. Then right click on the first cell on the top left. Then we paste. All right, so Excel asks us if the first row was data or was variable names. If you go back to the data, you realize that the first row does not necessarily represent cases uh, or observations. Observations start at row number two, which means our first row is actually uh, variable names. We're going to select the second option, treat first row as variable names, and we have our data in. That was easy, isn't it? Great. So I'm going to go ahead and close the data editor window at the, po at the moment. And uh, we go back to the Stata main window. And now we can start to edit the variables. To edit the variables, we open up what we call the variables manager window. And again, this is the second command that you need to write somewhere down, var manage, so var manage, var manage, and you press enter, that opens up the variables manager window. Okay, so in the variables manager window on the left hand side, we have the variables um, uh, interview ID, name, sex, age, and did you eat rice in the past seven days. On the right hand side, we have the properties for the variable that has been selected on the left hand side. In this case, interview ID has been selected. That's why we have interview ID properties here. Okay, the first property is the variable name, which is basically how the Stata recognizes um, this variable uniquely. So this variable name is supposed to not have any spaces in it, and um, it cannot start with a number, and again, it may not contain any symbols or special characters. And then we have the uh, label. The label is basically how the variable name appears uh, in, uh, in, in output when you're doing your analysis. How does that appear? Okay, so we can have spaces. For example, I can just throw in a space here between interview and ID, and that is gonna work without a problem. Next is the type. The data type is basically how this data is being stored. The explanation of this is beyond the scope of this video. 
The format is something that has already been generated just like the other properties as well, and it's something that we are not going to touch in this video as well. The value label though, this is um, now the set of uh, responses that are valid for this question. In other words, multiple choice for this question. Now, not every question is going to have multiple choice, one example being the variable that we are editing at the moment, interview ID, it's not going to have any multiple choice. So we're just going to skip this um, property of value table. All right, uh, notes is just a matter of uh, you know a description of this variable just for reference later. Now, um, it means we are done editing this variable. We can just hit apply and go to the next variable. You can go to the next variable by using the arrow here, next variable, or you can just click it on your left hand side. The next variable is the name, which is the name of respondent. We can edit the label, so it says name of respondent. We are done with this variable, we hit apply, we go to the next variable. The next variable is sex. We need to assign the list of responses. If you remember, I mentioned that one was male and two was female, we need to specify that. And we specify that by creating a set of values by going to manage under value label, so manage. And then what we do is we create label. So now this label or this set of um, value and label pairs needs to be given a name. And usually I just use the same name as the variable to which this label belongs to. In this case, sex, all right? So the value of one is going to mean male. And then you press add. And then the value of two is gonna mean female and I uh, click add, and then click OK, it means now we have added a set of values uh, for the variable sex. This is perfect. We can go ahead and close. Now we need to assign the value label to its variable. So in this case, you just click the drop down, and you can see now we have these values. Sex, that is the value label set for the variable sex. So we, hit, we select that set, and then we press our uh, we'll click apply and if um, that's it you see that on the column value label we have sex here which is the value label name and um, it's been assigned to the variable sex and it means everything is perfect let's go to the next variable next variable is age the variable name is age the label is age everything is perfect we just have to assign a value label do we have to assign a value label no why is that so? We actually um, define this variable as a continuous variable. If you're 15 years old, you type 15. If you're 50 years old, you type 50. That's it. Which means we are not going to supply any um, uh, lists of valid responses or multiple choice because it's a continuous open-ended variable. Which means this variable is okay. We go ahead to the next variable. The next variable says, did you eat rice in the past seven days? I usually like to have very short variable names because I use them, or you're gonna be using them for uh, when you're doing data analysis in the command box. You don't want to type a lot of stuff. So I'm gonna edit this variable name to just rice, okay? So the label is gonna be the same. This is perfectly fine. But when I'm calling it in the command box, it should just be, uh, be rice. Okay, the next thing we have to assign the values of zero for one, uh, sorry, zero for no and one for yes to that. Uh, variable, which means in the value label, you click the drop down and select yes, no, which is our value label set. Great. And you hit apply, it means everything is perfect. We're done editing our variables. I'll close this variable manager window and go back to the main um, setter window. Don't worry about all these commands that were fired here. This was what was happening behind the hood uh, or under the hood when, uh, when we were doing the variable editing in variables manager window. Great, the next step is for us to now start doing an, our analysis. I'm gonna start by looking at frequencies or counts. So frequencies is just a matter of a count of how many uh, observations there are for each of the values in a variable. Let's take an example of the variable sex. The variable sex has two values, male and female. We just wanna count how many males were there and how many females were there. To answer that question, you need to calculate frequencies. And we calculate frequencies by using the, uh, the command tabulate. So what we do is like this, you say tabulate, followed by the variable name, in this case the variable name, you have to type it the way it looks like. If it has capital letters, it has to be capital letters, that is the variable name. So tabulate sex, and that's it. Press enter, it means now 
uh, we have a table which shows frequencies for the for all the categories in the variable sex. And we have 16 males representing 57.14% and 12 females representing 42.86%, which means our sample had more males than we had females. That's perfect, isn't it? Now, how about the variable age? Can we run a tabulation for the variable age? Let's just try it. Tabulate age. Now look at that. The variable age is a continuous variable. It has so many, uh, it has so many different um, unique values with it. So when you calculate the frequencies, you're gonna have a big table which is gonna basically report for every unique value how many people you have on there. I don't think this is very useful in as far as summarizing a variable is concerned. So um, what we should be using now is what we call measures of central tendency, like, um, like average or mean and um, median. Okay, we also want to use what we call the um, measures of uh, variability or dispersion, like range and standard deviation. To do that, the command that we use is summarize. Summarize American English with a Z and followed by the variable name. So summarize age, and you can see we have 28 observations. The average age is 31. Standard deviation is 14.7, which is quite high. The minimum is 15, maximum of uh, 65, which means our range is 65 minus 15. The answer is 40, so the, our range is actually 40. So that's it when it comes to age, um, how we can summarize it. Of course, there, we can get more from this summary by giving uh, the, the summarize command an option called detail. Let's try that. Summarize age, you put a comma. When you put a comma, it means that whatever comes on the right-hand side is a, um, an option. So the option we need is detail. So summarize age, comma, detail. And you press enter. It's the same summarize command, but this time, if you look at the output, we have more information. So we have the first quarter, or the 25th percentile, and then we have the median, which is the 50th percentile, and then we have the 75th percentile. Then we have other stuff like um, the, the usual stuff, mean standard deviations, but we also have variance, number of observations, skewness, and kurtosis. Okay, you may want now to go and um, um, see how these variables look on a, uh, on a chart. Okay, I'm gonna start with the um, categorical variables, rice and uh, sex. Okay, so, you may add to, to um, look at these variables on a chart, I very much recommend using the pie chart. And to write or to produce a pie chart, all you have to do is say graph, pie, put a comma, and um, you say over, an open bracket, then you mention the variable that you would like to, to run this on, and it has to be a categorical variable. So for example, sex, and you close the bracket. Okay, so all you have to do is make sure you take note of this command and uh, just replace the variable inside of the bracket. So press enter, and now we have our chart. You can see, so blue for males and red for females. We had more males than females. This is great. If you want to get this chart into, say, Microsoft Word, all you have to do is right-click it, copy it, and right-click and paste. So now you have your chart in uh, Microsoft Word, you can actually start writing your narrative. Okay, I'll just go back to Stata right away. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna close the graph uh, viewer window. All right, you can run the same um, command for the variable rice. So, how about the variable edge? How do we show it on a graph? Okay, this time we're going to use the histogram. All right, so to write the histogram, it's actually very straightforward. All you have to say is histogram followed by the variable name, H. I very much recommend to throw in the comma and use option normal. So option normal is going to put the normal distribution curve on your histogram. Press enter. And as you can see, we now have our histogram Perfect for continuous variables and shows us that most of the people are, you know, way the younger ones and anything from uh, uh, 15 to uh, probably some, somewhere 30, 35 or 38. 
and uh, we had a few people from, from the ages of 40 to 60 something Stata. and All right um, if so you want to learn more, at this point i've shown you how you can get started channel, with Stata or our website and, um, and if you uh, want to learn me, more please check minutes. out our youtube channel or our website and uh, for me it's been 15 minutes thank you